and welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I am Michael Delon, and today I'm talking with William Reagan. And William, well, first of all, William, thank you. Thank you for spending some time with me on my uh, podcast. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. It's going to be a really fun conversation. Uh, William and, and his his team are um, they're marketers. They can help businesses grow. They do it from a kingdom perspective. So using Christian values and things, working with with companies like like paperback expert right we're christian based we're christian owned and we have um a lot of great things to do stories to tell i'm going to be quiet now i'm going to let william talk a little bit more about what he does but it's really a neat um marriage between marketing and faith that is so many times missing so um william mm -hmm. tell me how in the world did you get doing what you're doing today well thanks for that michael um it started with a uh, a man that grew up in a fantastic household, mom and dad, just moralistically um, on a straight and narrow path growing up. And yeah. so I was given the tools. Okay. Awesome. I was given the tools. Awesome. And um, I get to a point in my life where I enter the military. <laughs> I fall yep, away. Yep, I absolutely. do three tours in Iraq. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It gets crazy. 01 to 07 in the military is nuts. Um, I turn to substance abuse, uh, and uh, I fall away and I lose my way. Christ finds me when I'm in college at Texas A&M. He, he finds me, he saves me, and uh, for the past 15 years, I've been on a upward trajectory with our Christ and Lord. And uh, about two years ago, my friend at this church that we go to here, my partner now too, we start getting together, and as iron sharpens iron, we kind of start convicting ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. it, we start kind of taking a spiritual assessment of what it is that we've been doing and where it is that we want to go. And one of the problems that we saw in ourselves was we believed, but we weren't activated. Hmm. We believed, but we weren't activated. And so I came up with this saying, I looked at, my partner Skylar and I was like, then let's get activated. Okay. And it started there. And that's like, okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we found Matthew 25, the parable of the talents one night, and it kept us up until about three 30 in the morning. And you know, those conversations, like with the 100%. Christian brother or sister, you yeah. just start going, you start to go. And all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, epiphany. And so we started to look at ourselves a bit as the one talent man in a few of our areas. Mm -hmm. It's like, are we hiding our talents? Yeah. You know, we were both businessmen doing what it is that we were doing at the time uh, for corporate entities. Uh, I was with a, a nonprofit as their director of strategic initiatives, and it was a great place to be. And uh, he was doing marketing, uh, vice president of marketing for a custom integrations um, company that does micro LED screens. Well, we got together and we we're like, you know what? Let's step out of the boat like Peter did. Yeah. Let's just do it. Let's get activated and let's start using our talents and just be unapologetically Christian about it. Yeah. Let's start a business and make it totally not about us, not even necessarily about our our business partners, our clients, but yeah. about Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. And let's see what that does as a lead magnet, if you yeah. will, yeah. if you will. And what happened was an absolute phenomenal response from our target audience, because we haven't necessarily niched down into particular industry. What we said is we want to work with like-minded business owners that want to see their business as a set of talents given to them by God. As we see in Matthew 25, yeah. the talents are distributed by Christ. He says, do something with them. And we see that the five and two talent man immediately, the word is immediately went out and got activated. Yeah. They started producing more talents. The one talent man hit it yeah. under a rock <laughs> and did nothing. And we didn't want to be that person. And we don't want that for other kingdom business owners either. We want them to identify themselves as five talent individuals, and we want to help them make 10 talents. Let's bring back 10 talents. And so that is 
the story and genesis behind kingdom marketing. Man, I love that. You hit my hot button because Matthew 25 is one of my favorite passages as a mm. business owner because of all of that. And oh man, we could just spend a whole podcast around Matthew 25, but we're sure. not going to. We're not going to. <laughs> um, so I love unapologetically Christian because that's mm. good. And and it, there's there's so much there just in marketing that when you stand for something, you're going to attract your tribe. Mm. and repel those who don't want anything to do with it. And that's okay because there's, yeah. I mean, dude, there's no secret. What you do as a company with helping businesses grow is, um, I mean, lots of people do it. There are a lot of companies. So what you did is you said, here's the flag we're planting. And if this resonates with you, let's talk about kingdom purposes. And I love that. So you you niche just in a different sort of way. Right. Right, exactly. And, you know, part of our branding strategy, we believe so much in these stories because we resonated with the story. It's a parable. And yeah. so we actually kind of, you know, story building, we like to call it parable building. Yeah. You know, in a way, like, let's find our client story, bring that up to the surface, allow that to resonate with your ta target audience like it has with you. You found us because it resonated. It hit your chords. And so we need to hit your target audience's chords as well. And so part of our process, even in our third stage of our branding and story parable process is what do we do for the kingdom? Mm -hmm. What do we do in our strategy session for the kingdom on the back end of this? Once we find our executables and our deliverables, what are those executables specifically for the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. And part of that is, you know, us specifically have partnered with Sacred Selections as right. a percentage of proceeds partner. We're giving 10% of our net revenue back to yeah. fatherless children to find a family that is in the kingdom. And we encourage our clients and partners to do the same thing. And perhaps they, they have identified something that is true to their heart. I love it. We want to partner with you on that. We have this one company that came on, a cybersecurity firm. They're all into this Mercury One Foundation up in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And we're like, yes, that's it. You just told us what you want to get activated in. We want to get activated with you. Let's grow those talents. And so however it is, if you need to default to something that we're doing, awesome. Right. Join us. But however, if you have a passion, we want to join you too. And we just believe that when we get passionate and activated, great things are going to come. We're going to see a paradigm shift in this society, and we're going to see the kingdom of God grow. I'm Absolutely. just so optimistic about it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I, and I just wrote down like three people I need to connect with after this, and that's another issue. Let's talk about how you help business owners, though, okay? So yes. business, what, what is it that y'all do? Because we kind of hit around mm. it. Let's just dial in and hit that bullseye. What is what what are you doing to serve business owners? And then we'll talk about the struggles and challenges and all of that. But yeah, you know, I, I typically see a lot of our clientele recently. Typically, they're in that slipstream uh, error in their business. They found success. Mm -hmm. They are growing into that, you know, that five ten million dollar range, and they've they they they've hit something that slipstreamed them into a modicum of success and now they don't know what to do with it mm -hmm. it's like okay how do we get to the next level mm -hmm. these businesses i find you know they haven't really gone through a marketing strategy before perhaps the owner themselves was wearing the marketing hat and they know what their services are but they actually don't know who they are Mm -hmm. And that is it. That's an interesting nut to crack. It really yeah. is because a lot of us sometimes don't even know who we are as individuals <laughs> until right. we get a little help from the outside. You know, we don't know what we don't even know about ourselves. We have blind spots, that's right. if you will. And so I find that businesses too also have blind spots about their identity, about their identity, about their own psychology. And so that's what we do. We break that open first before we even execute on marketing. We believe that marketing for the sake of marketing is an absolute waste. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we are tactical, holistic in our approach. And we do that first 
with what we believe is the most important, that branding parable story strategy part of the yeah. equation. This is a three to four step process with us that takes multi days with each yeah. other. We get down, we powwow with each other. We go through a huge digital whiteboard of mind mapping. And at the end, you know, we're going to give you the demographics, psychographics of your target audience, messaging, brand identity, cohesive thought out patterns towards good marketing principles. Mm -hmm. We are traditionalists in our mark in our marketing approach. We are we, we, we believe uh, that good tried and true storytelling and identification of personality in this regard is um, is what resonates with people. We're up to date with the technology that's coming out and whatnot, but when it comes to making sure that we have a cohesive and proper strategy at the end based on all those things that we discovered is when marketing can actually take place because we need a gut reaction to happen in your target audience. Yeah. We need them to feel something. They might need the service, but guess what? You're not the only person providing that service. Right. And when they land on you for the better part of five, 10, 30 seconds, yeah. <laughs> they need to walk away with a gut reaction where it's like, yes, that's right. That's the one. And so that's what I'm trying to achieve for our clients. That's good. And and it goes back to what you were talking about. I love the parable aspect of it because, I mean, Jesus taught in parables, but mm. great, great movies are parables. They're stories. And so many times we we know that in fiction and we know that in in movies and we know that in. Why, why don't we know that in marketing? Mm. It's the stories that we tell that capture the attention of our audience in a in a sea of as I would say, Charlie Brown's teacher, right? <laughs> Everybody's just parroting the same thing. When you come with a powerful story that is true to you, and, mm. and I presume based on what I've, what I've learned about you guys, you take a very similar approach to I, that, that I do in clear messaging is I don't, I, I, I don't create messages for my clients. I discover the message that's hidden mm. inside of them. And that is so important. Is that, is that a fair, I just put words in your mouth. No, no, but th thank you. Exactly. You took it right out of my heart, actually, because authenticity sells and yes. people can smell authenticity. And when it's not true, it stinks. It, big time, big time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and it's, yeah, it's so important. And for the business owner listening to it, you, you got to understand there, there's a, there's a, there's a line where you've got to have enough boldness, enough courage to share. And, and right. to realize, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, William, if you and I were at a birthday party for your kids, we'd spend the first five minutes just doing that dance, trying sure. to find common ground and everything. Why wait for that first meeting with the prospect? Why not share that openly and say, this is who I am. Come. Let's Absolutely. Have a yeah. The, vulner the vulnerability uh, of us as human beings and that being something that we're ashamed of is a uh, it it's a commentary on our culture for sure. But I think it's a commentary uh, of of uh, man um, and his um, his insecurities. You yeah. know, I, I, we all struggle with that as human beings. And when we elevate it to a business, when, when we are at an actual more open persona sometimes we even hide more let's get back into the parable of the talents yeah. what are you hiding why are you hiding why was the one parable talent man hiding well it yeah. said it's because he was afraid right he was afraid of his own abilities even mm -hmm. it's not that the one talent man didn't have abilities of course he had abilities we all have abilities but we need to be vulnerable with ourselves and we need to be authentic with ourselves and be able to take that off Take that off of a, the bushel off of it and allow that to shine on the hill as we've been instructed. And so I don't understand why there is a difference between that type of mindset on, on, on a person's spiritual journey and why that mindset can exist in your business journey yeah. as well. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, that is so good. Your abilities, because when you, when you dive into Matthew 25. This hit me a, a long time ago. You got a five talent, two talent, and one talent, right? Mm. And the passage said the owner gave them talents, each according to their ability. Yes. So I think here's where here's where business owners struggle, um, William. I really I really believe this is 
if if you're a two talent person, mm. you're looking outside and everybody you see on social media and on YouTube and everywhere are five talent people. Mm. And you're trying to be like the five talent guy. And I don't think that's what the scripture says. Mm. Scripture says if you're a two talent guy, what do you do? He went out, and he made two more. He was exactly. faithful with what he had. Stop comparing yourself. Faithful with what you had is such the it, it hits the nail right on the head. It really does because you weren't expected to be any more than what you wore. Amen. God saw you from the very beginning for who you wore and said, that is my son. That is my daughter. Here are the talents that they have. What are you going to do with them for my kingdom? And you know what? I love that it immediately goes into the separation of the sheep and the goats afterwards. Yeah. It goes directly into it. And here's what the takeaway is when it comes to us gauging our success, I believe, as individuals and business owners. What, what categorizes you as a sheep? You took care of the least of these. The most vulnerable of these you took care of. Yeah. And that is what is counted upon you as being sheep and doing sheep activity. Mm -hmm. And so that is my encouragement to our partners, our business owners. Yes, let's grow. Let's yeah. grow the talents. Let's grow the revenue. But let's figure out how to take care of the least of these. Absolutely. And I believe that if our strategy aligns with figuring out how to take care of the vulnerable, if we believe that and we pray for that, I've read that God will give the increase. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and it, it comes back at the end of the day is, is what are you focusing on? Mm. Are we focusing on the almighty dollar and profit and going, I run a seven-figure business. Right. Who cares? What are you right. doing with it, right? Because mm. I, you know, we're trying to invest in the kingdom because that, that's where the greatest rewards are found, right? Randy Alcorn was super instrumental in my life with, through his book and just realizing I can't take it with me, so I'm going to invest now in the kingdom and have those rewards waiting on me. That's all because I run a great business here using principles that I've learned from scripture and other people. I, I market really well, but I'm authentic. It's like, this is who I am. And you do all of those things the right way. What are you chasing? Where do you find right. satisfaction? It's not in running a big business. It's not in the bottom line profit. It's what are you doing with those profits? When you right. have the, the least of these, the ministry you have, we, we serve lots of ministries with our business. Others, that's where right. the joy comes from. That's what drives me is like, how much money can I give away? Oh, I love that's, that. That is huge. so important in running a business. And people say, well, I don't have the money to give away. It's like, well, it's just like the tithing question at a young age, right? I don't have enough money to tithe. Yes, you do. Tithe the dime. It's not about the dollar amount. It's about your right. Heart. That's right. Oh, Beautiful. You know. I could I could not agree more. Beautifully Beautiful. said. Yeah, we could, we could talk about this a long time. So, all right, business <laughs> owners out there, they're struggling with marketing and social mm. media. And you, you can handle all of those things. But I love that you kind of put those um, second or third, because you're dealing with the story, the parable of that business owner, because that is really business owner listening. That's what's going to separate you from everybody else who does what you do. That's right. You get that right. Then you can figure out which channels you can market on. Because they yeah, all absolutely. Work, no, absolutely. But... Yeah, the executables will become apparent. They, they, they will present themselves because I just don't, I have people come up to our front door and it's like, oh, um, it's like, oh, we even like y'all's mindset, but we need SEO. Can y'all do our SEO? Well, my first question is, why do you believe that you need SEO? Why mm -hmm. do you believe that you need PPC? Like, I appreciate you knowing these things, but I was like, why? Why do we need them? And those things will become self-evident uh, once we understand exactly who it is that you are and what your parable is. Absolutely. All right. We're, um, what's the process of, of working with you guys? Is it a consultation at first? Cause I mean, I got a lot of uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are kingdom minded and they're sitting over here going, this is crazy. What is this guy? Who is it? Talk a little bit about the process of working with you first and then we'll tell them where to go. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. Consultation first. Let's start a relationship. I want to get to talk, talking with you. Like we're talking right now on this show. You know, it's a vulnerable conversation. Please bring your heart with you. I want to know exactly who it is that you are and why it is that you are. And then we'll see if that relationship can blossom into a working one. Yeah. And uh, once that's done, 
we will assess where you're at right now. Perhaps you've already gone through the branding strategy. Perhaps you already know exactly who it is that you are and you just need someone to amplify your voice. We'd love to know what that is and amplify that for you. Perhaps you haven't found that voice yet, though. This is the person that I want listening to right now to really hear. I want to hear this story. I want to uncover this story. And then the executables will present themselves. We have a full suite team of vetted individuals. You'll love it. Project management out the wazoo. You'll know exactly where, where your executables are and how they're being delivered. We're very big on transparency. But start with a conversation. Try kingdom.com, T-R-Y kingdom.com is the best way to get a hold of us. I will respond to you personally to get the ball rolling. You'll deal with me and we'll just start a relationship and just see where the spirit leads, honestly. Yeah. I, I love that. You, all right. I, I, I don't have anything else to say because you just nailed it. And we're going to we're going to grab that that domain. Try dot com. We're going to have that in the show notes. And business owner, if, you, if you're out there, if you're a faith based business owner, you need to reach out and just have that conversation because, you know, as well as I do. I mean, how do you choose a marketing partner? Because most entrepreneurs, they're not great at marketing. They're great at other things. And we need to we need to lock arms with somebody who can really partner with us because I think a lot of money is wasted, not just in marketing, but in jumping from one agency to the next, to the next, to the next. Yes. And having four different agencies. One does PPC and one does this and one does it's like, no, 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 stop the game. Because the downside is they're not communicating. They're not telling your story, your parable. That's right. It's going to grab that your audience and, and draw them in have the conversation with william try kingdom.com go check them out look at their website have the conversation and, and go finally i have found my people and mm. i think i'm on a pathway of growth as we plant seeds that are going to bring a wonderful harvest when we stay consistent mm, thank you for that oh william thank you for being my guest thank you for for being who you are in, in, in creating this really cool marketing company that is so focused on the kingdom of God and Christ-centric and helping other faith-based entrepreneurs um, really knock out something that is a, a, a stumbling block is marketing. How do you do it? How do you do it well? You tell your story and you show up authentically. William, thank you for being here, brother. Absolutely. Let's get activated. Appreciate it, Michael.